Yes. <laughs> What's up, Orkizens? Yo, Orkizens, man, my hand Today, you're going to uh, learn something about the story of creation in Norse mythology. And I know that for this topic, you're going to encounter a lot of names, a lot of characters, which are... Um, it sounds unfamiliar, it sounds peculiar, and it's somewhat strange. Same as with the different... Um, what is this? Places? Also, with the flow of the story on how the universe was created. Yeah. <laughs> Good day. Hi, guys. So today, we're going to be faced with another story of creation and how the world was created. We're going to know what is the story behind Norse mythology, story of creation. So, let's start. Let's go. Before we further proceed with uh, the story of creation itself in Norse mythology, let me introduce to you first the different regions or realms in Norse mythology. Or realms of Norse mythology. Okay? So first, uh, these realms or regions in Norse mythology, we are going to encounter this as we go on with the story of creation in Norse mythology. So number one, we have this Niflheim. Niflheim, basically, this is the land of ice. Again, the land of ice in Norse. The second one is Muspelheim. If Niflheim is the land of ice, Muspelheim now is the land of fire. Aside from Niflheim and Muspelheim, I know that you are familiar with Asgard. So Asgard, this is the dwelling place of the gods and goddesses in Norse. So if you have watched a lot of movies wherein Asgard... Um, has been mentioned so many times or you have encountered this so many times this comes from Norse mythology number four we have Midgard Midgard is considered as uh, the place where human beings are living next is the Jotunheim so Jotunheim from the word Jotun it means giants which means Jotunheim this is where the giants live next to Jotunheim we have Vanaheim. So Vanaheim, this is the home of the Vanir. The Vanir, these are the masters of sorcery and magic. And again, they live in Vanaheim. Then after Vanaheim, we have Alfheim. Alfheim now is the homeland of the elves or the light elves. Again, not just elves. Huh? They are, it is the home of the light elves. Elves. Aside from Alfheim, we have the Savartalfheim. This Savartalfheim is now the home of the dwarves. Okay, home of the dwarves, but most particularly home of the dark elves. That is Savartalfheim. And the last in the realms of Norse mythology is the Helheim, which is the home of the dishonorable dead. If you're going to look at this uh, picture or illustration, you're going to see a big tree. And that big tree is, to be, is considered as the world tree in Norse, and we call that as Yggdrasil. Look at the spelling in the picture that is Yggdrasil. Aside from the Yggdrasil, there is um, a rainbow bridge that connects Asgard to the rest of the regions in Norse. And we call that rainbow bridge as the by frost okay so again by frost is the rainbow bridge connecting asgard to the rest of the world in norse mythology so again these are the realms of norse mythology which will be hmm? <laughs> Wait on. which we will be encountering in the story of creation of norse mythology let's start with the story itself according to um Norse mythology tale, before the dawn of time and before the world was created in Norse mythology, there was only a big, dark, vast emptiness, which is called as Ginung Gagap. Again, don't be confused with the spelling and how it is pronounced. The big, dark, vast emptiness is called as Ginung Gagap. So it all started with Ginung 
gagap. Ginung gagap, ginung gagap. So from this ginung gagap, two realms came into existence. So we are now going to encounter uh, one of the realms that I have presented a while ago. So two realms came into existence. First of which is what we call the Niflheim. Niflheim in the north, Niflheim was formed in the north of Ginunga Gap. It became such a dark and cold place that there was nothing else than ice, frost, and fog. Again, that is Niflheim. Okay, so aside from the Niflheim, as I have mentioned, there are two realms that came into existence. The second one to the south of Ginunga Gap, the realm of Muspelheim was formed. Again, the realm of Muspelheim uh, was formed. This became the land of fire and it became so hot that it would only consist of fire, lava, and smoke. So this is the place where the fire giant Surt lives along with other fire demons and fire giants. So this Muspelheim is considered as the home of the destroyers of the world. Again, that is Muspelheim. So Niflheim and Muspelheim. It is also said that a spring called Virgilmere is where all the cold rivers are from. Again, Virgilmere are uh, where all the cold rivers are from. And the name of these cold rivers is Elivagar. Again, Elivagar, which means ice waves. So each of these 11 rivers has a name. But as a whole, they are referred to as Elivagar. Again, they are referred to as Elivagar. So the water from Elivagar floated down the mountains to the plains of Ginum the Gap where it solidified to frost and ice, which gradually formed a very dense layer which grew in size in all directions. Again, Virgil Mir and Eli Vagar. From Muspelheim in the south came lava and sparks into the great void Ginunga Gap. In the middle of Ginunga Gap, the air from Niflheim and Muspelheim met. Again, the air from Niflheim and Muspelheim met. So the fire melted the ice and it began to drip. Some of the ice started to take the shape of a humanoid creature. So what is this humanoid creature? Or who is this humanoid creature? It was Ayotun, also called a giant. Again, Ayotun, or also called as a giant. And this giant was, who is he? He is Emir, the first giant in Norse mythology. So, we have now the first creature in the story of creation in Norse mythology. Again, that is Emir, the first mountain giant. When Emir fell asleep, he started to sweat. He started to sweat and the sweat under his arms grew two more giants. Again, it grew two more giants. One is a male and the other one is a female. Okay, one male, one female giant. And one of his legs, imagine this one, one of his legs paired with the other to create a third. Leg will mate with another leg and it will produce another giant and we call that as Thrajalmir. So Thrajalmir, that one male and one female giant and Emir, we call them as giants or the Jotuns. Okay, it is sometimes called as Jotnar. Jotuns, Jotnar, so they are the giants in this story. Again, from Emir, from his sweat, came that one male and one female, and from the mating of his left and right leg appeared Thrajalmir, who is a strength yeller. So these were the first in the family of frost giants, and they were, again, they were breastfed by a cow. And that cow is a giant, giant cow, 
who is Adumla. Again, Odumla, who like Emir, was created from the melting ice in Ginung Gagap. It means to say that uh, this Adumla is another creature that appeared right after Emir. So again, as I was saying, the giant cow named Adumla, okay, giant cow named Adumla fed or breastfed those giants. So this uh, Odumla fed herself on a block of salty ice. And while she was licking on the ice block, something strange happened. Again, something strange happened. On the first day, there, some human hair emerged from the block. Again, some human hair emerged from the block. While on the second day, she was continuously licking the ice, Adamla now uncovered what did she uncover? She uncovered a head. That is on the second day. Imagine that one. Well, she was just licking the ice because there was an ice block. And uh, I, probably she's hungry. So she's licking the ice. But while she was licking the ice, she unraveled on day one human hair. And day two, that is a head. At last, on the third day, the rest of the body came out. Who would that be? Again, the rest of the body came out, and the man who had grown out of the salty rock was, that is, Buri. Buri, the first of the gods. Again, Buri, the first of the gods. He is described to be a giant so big and mm -hmm, handsome. Again, Buri was a giant, big, and handsome. So this Buri, it is said in the story that he would later have a son named Bor. Again, that is Bor. And the wife of Bor is named as Bestla. So Bor and Mesla, they got married and they had th three, three, three sons. And that is in the name of Odin, Billy, and Bong. No, Odin, Billy, and <coughs> excuse me, Bong. They, okay, so they are the three sons of Bor and Bestla. So let me just recap. Buri is the father of the gods, and this Buri had a son named Bor. Bor was married to Bestla, and Bor and Bestla had three sons, namely Odin, Billy, and they. Okay, let's continue. This, um, what do we call this? The Aesirs. Okay. The Aesirs, of course, Odin and his two brothers were bothered. Were bothered by the fact that the giants outnumbered the Aesirs or the Aesir. So the giants were constantly conceiving new giants. So they are coming more and more giants. But the only solution that they could see was to kill Emir. Again, they only need to kill Emir. All right, so the three brothers waited until Emir was asleep before they assaulted him. Let me repeat that the only way that they can kill Emir or the only solution that they can do is just to kill Emir. So this, they just waited for Emir to fall asleep so they can assault Emir. All right, we continue. So this um happened with a very horrifying battle again a very horrifying battle and by using all their strength billy bay and odin they managed they managed to kill emir yes very happy for that they managed to kill emir and the blood spouted out with a furious force in every direction from emir's body and most of the giants drowned in the huge flood of blood. But only two giants survived, and that is Bergelmir and his wife. I don't know who the wife is, but it was mentioned that Bergelmir and his wife were safe. So the couple fled and found a safe place in the land of mist and saved their lives. And all future giants descended from this couple again Virgil Mir and his wife so Emir was already killed if you're going to look at that uh, picture 
he is being killed by the three, Billy, Bay, and Odin. So when he was killed, the remains of the body of Emir or his remains were now transformed into the different parts of the universe. So now we are going to start with the creation of the universe or of the world in Norse mythology. And that is all because of Vili, Ve, and Odin. So again, the world was created from his remains. The three brothers dragged Emir's lifeless body towards the center of Ginunga Gap. This is the place where they created a world from the remains of Emir. Imagine that the blood of Emir became the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, and other bodies of water. But aside from the blood of Emir, we also got his flesh, wherein it was transformed into land. So the flesh of Emir became the land. How come that it happened? But it is not yet finished because the three got the bones of Emir and they transformed the bones of Emir or it became the mountains okay so the bones became the mountains while the teeth of emir were transformed into rocks so is it already complete not yet okay it is not yet complete because there are different body parts that were transformed into the part of the world or the universe okay? for example the human hair or the hair it became now the green the grease <laughs> the grass and the trees moreover the eyelashes Eyelash, what is this? Oh my god. Eyelashes, the, this is our the eyelashes, okay? The eyelashes, it became now the Medgard, okay? It became the Medgard. And they are not yet done. Billy, Vey, and Odin were not yet done on creating the universe because they got the brain of Emir, and what they did was they threw the brain up in the air, throw the brain up in the air, and it became now the clouds okay it became the clouds but apart from that the skull of emir became the sky so emir's skull now would be the lid that covered the new world again the skull the skull of emir become now the lid that covered the new world and the three the brothers grabbed some of the sparks shooting out from Muspelheim. So again, Muspelheim is the land of fire. And what they did was they threw the sparks up toward the inside of the skull. And these sparks gleamed at night. And this is what we call the stars. Again, the stars. Okay, so on the plains of Idabo, they built... The three built Asgard. And this Asgard, as, as I have mentioned in the beginning, that um, uh, this Asgard now is the home of the gods. And very far away from Asgard, in a place called the Jotunheim, uh, where the giants allowed to live. After that, after that, the dwarves came into existence. What are these dwarves? Where did they come from? Oh, let's find out. So again, the dwarves came into existence while Odin and his brothers were in the progress of creating a new world from the body parts of the giant Emir. Worms like that. Worms kept crawling out of the rotting remains. And these worms would become now... What would, they ha what would happen to the worms? The worms now transformed into... Yes, dwarves. Because the three brothers, Odin, Vili, and Vey, were afraid that the sky would fall down. They told that four of the dwarves must hold up the sky. Again, four of the dwarves must hold up the sky. So they were sent in, uh, they were sent out in each direction. There, here, here, and down there. Okay, so they were sent into different direction. First of the dwarves was uh, Nordy. Nordy is north. Again, Nordy is north. Then uh, from this to the east, we call that as Austri. Again, that is Austri. And down here is Sundry or south. 
okay? Sundry or south. And the other one, or we call that as vestry, that is west. Again, that is west. So that is uh, one of the contributions of the dwarves that came into existence in the story of creation in Norse mythology. One, one contribution only. Apart from that, apart from holding this guy, it is said that the rest of the dwarves made their homes in rocks and caves under the ground. And this is called as Sabartalfheim. Again, Sabartalfheim. S-V-A-R-T-A-L-F. H-E-I-M, okay, Sabartal Heim. So again, Sabartal Heim, this is the home of the dwarves. And these dwarves became experts in craftsmanship and they have created some of the most powerful and magical weapons. Powerful, magical weapons like the Mjolnir of Thor, okay? Again, like the Mjolnir of Thor, aside the from making that Mjolnir, they're also making beautiful jewelry. Again, Thor being the god of thunder and not Victor Bagtangol who God gave me you. Okay, that is Thor. Again, the hammer of Thor is Mjolnir, which was created by the dwarves. All right, next. A man by the name of Mundil Fari, again, Mundil Fari, which means the one moving according to particular times, Mundil Fari from Midgard had two children. Again, had two children, and they were so shiny. Oh, they were so shiny and beautiful that he decided to call his son as his son as on the left corner, Money. Money, okay? Manny. So he called his uh, son as Money. Ma Manny. And the other one, of course, is the daughter who's named as Saul. So the gods were so furious by his arrogance that they took both of them and put them up in the sky. Again, they were put up in the sky. Let's start with the first um, uh, offspring of Mundil Fairy, and that is Saul. Saul would ride in a chariot that is pulled over the sky by two horses. First is Arbakar, Arbakar, India. Arbakar, which means early awake. Again, early awake and um, Alzbirir, <laughs> Alzbirir, okay, which means very quick. Again, very quick. So under the chariot, there is a shield which is called as Sabalin. Again, Sabalin, that protects the earth below from the flames. Again, that is for the story of Saul. But apart from Saul, again, there is Manny. Manny is only pulled by one horse. And that one horse is named as Alzvedir. Again, Alzvedir. Alzvedir. <laughs> Manny stole two children from Midgard. Who do you think are they? Again, he stole two children from Midgard. And they are Bill and Yuki. Bill and Yuki to help him drive his chariot. Again, Bill and Yuki were just stolen by Manny from Midgard. And this two help uh, Manny in driving his chariot. So they are pursued. They are pursued by two wolves. One is Skull. Skull. Pasok siya, Skull. Skull, which uh, means um, treachery. Against treachery. And the other one is Hati. Hati, which means hate. Okay? So each day, um, this Skull and Hati would take a small bite out of the moon. Would take a small bite out of the moon. The reason why you can see that the moon has a lot of um, a lot of yes yes you call that one but the moon would get away and heal itself again 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 <laughs> itself again and these two wolves will one day will one day catch the sun and the moon which will happen at Ragnarok oh I, I remember the word um, craters okay craters in the moon but again the moon Heal itself again and again and again. Again, that is crater. Thank you. I remember the word. Let's proceed. So, in that story, 
Um, according to Norse tale, there is also a story about a giant. A giant by the name Norby. Norby, which had a daughter called Not. Again, the daughter is Not. And uh, the daughter Not had a son named Dagger. Okay? Again, Not and Dagger. So both um, Not and Dagger arriving in chariots like that that are pulled by horses too. So Not is pulled by her horse and we call that as... Uh, by the way, before I proceed, Not, this is now considered as Night. While Dagger, this is Day. If uh, Mani and Sol, they are Moon and Sun, Not and Dagger, they are Night and Day. As I was saying, Not is pulled by her horse and that is called as Rimfaxi. Again, Rim fact C, which means rhyme main. Again, rhyme main. And behind her is dagger. Dagger pulled by his horse. It's called as who is called as skin fact C. Rim fact C, skin fact C. So skin fact C means shining main. Again, shining main. And these apparently, again, these apparently are followed by two wolves. Two wolves again. Who are those wolves? They are again Skull, which is treachery, and the other one is Hattie, which means hate, which makes this part, which makes this part a bit confusing since there are multiple and conflicting sagas about this part in Norse mythology. But again, we're just going to take both stories about Norby, Not and Dagger, and of course Mundil Fairy, Manny, and Sol. On the other hand, or moreover, um, while Billy, Bay, and Odin walked on the beach, they found two logs. Again, they found two logs. One is coming from an ash tree, and the other one is coming from an elm tree. So, ash tree and elm tree. Then, this three, Odin, Billy, and Bay, gave the two logs good qualities. Again, they gave them good qualities. So Odin gave the logs, what did he give? Odin gave the logs spirit and life. Again, spirit and life. While they, uh, while they, while Billy gave them, um, oh, Billy gave them movement and mind. Yes, <laughs> movement and mind. While they, on the other hand, they gave them um, shape, feelings, speech, and senses. Okay? So again, the three gave them good qualities. What happened now to the two lugs? Again, what happened now to the two lugs? After this three, Odin, Billy, and they have uh, given those good qualities to the ash tree and uh, from or the lugs from an ash tree and an elm tree okay so again um after giving those good qualities by odin billy and bay the first the first two humans had been created first two humans had been created so the man if you're going to look at the picture they are being given by odin billy and bay the different qualities the man um, was given a name and he was named as he was named as Ask <laughs> and the woman was given the name Ambla or Ambla or Ambla yeah Ask and Ambla which means they were the first two human beings in the story of creation in Norse mythology only because of Odin, Vili and they imagine from two loves the first two human beings were created and the Aesir or the Aesir decided the humans should live in a place which is called as Midgard and with that that is already the end of the story of creation in Norse mythology so until next time we're going to have another meaningful discussion when it comes to world literature thank you so much god bless and bye bye yes
Attack Refix.